Uh, I'm going to start doing uh, some videos about water. I I've come to realize that without water, nothing else matters. All the other preps you've done, all the other food you've stored, guns, ammo, hardening your home, none of that matters without water. And uh, because of that realization, and something happened to me the other day, uh, my Berkey water filter said I basically trusted my wife to both failed and broke off from their bases after only a few weeks of being underwater. And uh, it made me realize how important water is and how having redundant methods of purifying water, how important that is. So this is one of them. And uh, it's been done before. There's a lot of information out there, but I've never done it. So that's where I'm going to start because this is the simplest, uh, easiest to to attain. You know, it's a clear bottle. Who doesn't have that? And uh, this method is called SODIS, S-O-I-D-I-S. And all that stands for is solar disinfection. And basically what you do is fill a clear bottle up with water and set it in the sun. And it has to be clear because the UV rays from the sun is what kills the bacteria. And uh, the World Health Organization, WHO, approves this method. It even kills E. coli. Uh, and you all know E. coli is one of the biggest killers. There's three. There's E. coli. Uh, I may not be pronouncing these right, but it's the way I read them. It sounds like the right pronunciation. Cryptosporidium and Giardia. Those three. And uh, it, the UV and the heat and being in the sun kills those three. So you could take any water that's not contaminated with petrochemicals and purify it and make it safe for you to drink. This method does nothing for petrochemicals. If there's you know, oil or gas or other kinds of chemicals in the water, this, this uh, SOTUS method won't uh, take that out. So you need to take that into account whenever you find water, uh, determine whether it's been polluted by petrochemicals. Okay, here's what you do. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to the bayou and I'm going to dip me out some water. Actually, I'm going to put it in this one because it has a lid. That way I can get back to the house without spilling it. And uh, I made this little just piece of little wood here to set over the top of the other one that I'm going to pour into. And what I'm going to do is filter it. This is just a coffee filter. Got a screen on it. Uh, and these are the regular coffee filters that you use every day, the paper coffee filters. And I'm just going to put them in there, put them in this thing here, and I'm going to pour my water and just filter as much as I can uh, using this method first. And there's something called turbidity. If the water is turbid, or basically that means if it has a lot of little particles in it, it takes a little longer for the UV to penetrate this and uh, kill the germs, kill the pathogens. So you want to make it as clear as possible. <clears throat> uh, one other thing, whatever you put your uh, water in can't be any thicker than six inches because UV can't penetrate any deeper than six inches. Uh, you can use glass, you can use plastic, but you, you would want to try to use something food grade. You cannot use tinted it has to be clear, and that's because uh, tinted will prevent the UV rays from getting through the bottle to the water. All right, uh, I'm going to go down to the bayou. I'm going to dip me out some water. We're going to come back, pour it in here, and pour it in here and set it out in the sun and uh, have a look. And uh, I may even drink it. Let's go to the bayou. All right, welcome to Door Cheap Bayou. I'm going to dip my five gallon bucket over that rail right there. I got a, a rope on the handle. I'm just going to lower it down in there and fill it up. And uh, I brought my two attack dogs just to keep me safe. I don't know. That's kind of dark. Let's uh, put the lid on carry it back. Alright, 
let's get to get to filtering it. Get away, Breezy. It's gonna take a little while, so uh, I'm gonna make you watch this whole thing move, everybody. Move. All right, I'll uh, I'll get enough of this to fill that bottle up, and uh, we'll be back. Just uh, a quick update. It's taken forever for these coffee filters to uh, filter this water. I've only got about one inch of water in the bottom of this this one right here, and uh, I've been doing this for about ten minutes. So these, this is a doubled up coffee filter. It's two coffee filters, and uh, what I just found out through the miracle of Google uh, is filters. Fil these coffee filters are typically good for about twenty microns. Which uh, is not bad. Is not not that's not bad. And I did take a peek at the water that's going through the filters into this bucket, and it is noticeably more clear than that. So uh, who knows? I may do this twice and see what happens. Just uh, just bring you up to date. Well, uh, this is a learning experience for me. I've never done this, so what I realized is uh, this is stopped up already, and. Uh, let me show you what little bit I got in there. There is a difference in the color between this and, and that. But uh, I think what I should have done is poured this water through uh, maybe a piece of cotton or uh, a nylon, something like that first, and then went to the coffee filters. Because uh, I've started with this, so I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to take these two coffee filters out and replace them. And uh, I think if I get probably another oh, another three inches or so in there, I only got about an inch and a quarter of water that's uh, gone in there. I think that'll be enough to fill that two liter bottle up. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this out and put two more filters in there and keep going. But in hindsight, I think I should have poured this through a, uh, a you know, t-shirt, maybe a pair of nylons, something like that. But it's working. It's just very, very slow. All right, I got some uh, more filters, and uh, I just had another thought that, you know, I've doubled these up, and there's really no need to double them up because doubling them doesn't reduce the the micron size. It just increases the amount of time it takes for it to go through 20 microns. So basically it has to go through 20 microns of mesh twice. So uh, I'm only going to use one filter. And I may re-filter everything a second time. Uh, and and as, I, you know, as I do this, uh, I'm not going to miss a step. I'll let you know exactly what I do. So if I have success, you can repeat it. And if I don't, you can avoid the mistakes I make. But in the meantime, it's just my wife and I. And you can only eat so much watermelon before you get sick of it. And uh, let's watch my chickens have a blast. Follow me. Go on, Rocky. There's plenty. I'm not going to bother you. Don't sneak off. Come right out of the refrigerator too. Alright, let's go have a look-see for some eggs and then uh, I'll leave you alone about my chickens. 
Got any eggs in here for me, girls? No. No. Well, it's still early. It's like 9.30 in the morning. My goodness, you're working on that. I don't know why chickens are so interesting to me. I mean, I, there's no doubt. I love my chickens, but there's no doubt in my mind that if I were to, like, pass out in here, they would peck my eyeballs out. I just wanted to take a second and explain a little bit more about turbidity, turbid water. Uh, if you look down in, I don't know if this will pick it up, in the bottom of this bucket, some sediment has already, just in the 30 minutes or so this bucket has been sitting here, some sediment has already settled at the bottom of this bucket. So that might be an even smarter thing to do uh, when you dip a bucket of water out of a bayou or river stream. Let it set for an hour or two so the bigger stuff settles to the bottom. And turbidity just means the the uh, matter that's in the water. And, and in this case, it's, uh, you know, vegetable matter, some sand. Vegetation, not vegetable. Vegetation, leaves, stuff that falls in the bayou from above, bird poop, fish poop. Oh yeah, fish poop in water. So uh, that's turbidity. And the darker the water, the more uh, filtration it requires. And the darker the water, the longer you have to leave it out in the sun. Uh, and there is a point, and I'm not certain at what point that is, but there is a point where UV won't penetrate, or penetrate just the first inch or two. So you might use a smaller bottle if you have really turbid water. You might use a one liter bottle or a small Coke bottle or something. Because uh, you really, you want the UV to penetrate entirely the, the vessel that's holding the water. Alright, uh, I'm fixing a, this is my second filter. I'm fixing to change it out and put my third one in. And uh, I don't know if you can see. Breezy, don't get away from my filters. That's the first one there. I don't know if you can see how brown it is. Can you see what I got in there? It's, uh, I would say, uh, uh, it's, it's about half of what I, uh, dipped out originally. And I'm into this about an hour and 30 minutes right now. And my point is, this is, drinking water is, uh, going to take a lot of time and effort. A lot and way more than I thought so uh, geez if you and the, and the amount of coffee filters I've used uh, I'm gonna stop filtering right now and I'm gonna put another coffee filter in there and I'm gonna refilter this one more time and uh, then I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna put it in my bottle and set it in the Sun and uh, we'll get to that point in, in just a second but I just wanted to tell you an hour and a half I'm into this, and I still don't have purified drinking water yet. So, uh, it's a way, way harder than my expectations were. It's going to be a full-time job. If you don't have access to uh, clean water, uh, it'll be a full-time job finding it and, and making it drinkable. And the amount of filters, if you, think, if you thought, you know, one was enough, uh, Maybe ten times that amount, because I'm surprised that uh, these filters stopped up so quickly. Now, I did learn something, that uh, when I dipped this out of the bayou, I should have just come here and let it set, you know, a few hours for the, the heaviest part of the uh, matter to settle to the bottom. Because that's probably what stopped up my first filter so quick. And there's the second one. It's just as dirty as that one, and I'm sure the third one is too. So uh, I'm gonna keep at it. All right, it's 11, and uh, the reason that's just significant is because I'm gonna set this out in the sun for uh, six hours. This is still not as clear as I'd like it to be. 
and there's still debris in the bottom that got past the filters. So, uh, hour and, about an hour and 45 minutes to get to this point here, and I'm still not ready to drink it yet. See if I can do this one-handed without tipping over the bottle. This is way more work than I anticipated, and it's good to know that now. There are other methods of purifying water, making it drinkable, making it safe. Uh, this is the probably the least desirable way right here. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on. And it's still got a pretty dark color to it, but uh. That's way better than what I started with. And uh, once I filtered the water, I refiltered it a second time. And uh, I'm drying out those filters and I'll set them out on my bench and let you have a look at the progression of uh, dirt and sediment and vegetation. Anyway, the next step is to set this out in the sun. And they say that if you set it on something reflective, it reflects the UV rays back into the bottle. So I'm probably just going to find some aluminum foil and uh, make a bit of a curve out of something, maybe cardboard, I don't know, and set this on it in a spot in my yard that will be sunny for the next six hours. I'll show you that when I'm done. Right, this is just a little piece of cardboard that I have uh, laid some, some uh, tin foil on, aluminum foil. All right, that's gonna uh, that's gonna keep me from dying, cause I'm gonna drink this in six hours. See you then. It's almost time. I want to give it uh, what another. God, I'm trying to hold it steady. I want to give it a little more time. Oh, if that dog pees on that, I'm going to kill him. Breezy, get away! Breezy! Alright, I had to I had to shut the camera off so I could scream at the dog. But uh, it's almost time. I want to show you the filters. And uh, those nuts are just to uh, uh, weight them down. I've had my doors open. I'm not going to show you the last one yet. And that's what a clean one looks like. So that is an awful lot of filters for a little bit of water. And uh, oh God, let me get these dogs out of here. All right, all right, hey. Well, I guess getting them outside is just not going to happen. I don't have my AC on out here, so I got the doors open. So uh, There's a couple of things I have learned from this experiment. One, getting the water, going down to the bayou, that's a lot of work. It's a mile and two tenths down to the bayou. And, uh, of course, the same back. And if you're going to use this method of water purification, you would certainly want to do it on a much, much larger scale because it took so long. That's the second thing. The amount of time it took to pour that water through those filters just to get two liters of fairly, uh, I'm not going to call it filtered, I'm going to call it strained because 20 microns is hardly filtering. Although it, it did lighten the water up, by the time I uh, poured it through there the last time that water had really lightened up a good bit. <sighs> Entertainment. 
And uh, in all honesty, this would be my last choice as far as a method of uh, making water drinkable. It's way more work and time consuming, and uh, it uses way more filters than I ever imagined. I, I'm glad I did this experiment because I was totally convinced that uh, all I would have to do is go down to the bayou, grab a bucket of water, run it through a coffee filter, set it in the sun, bing, bang, boom, done, drink it, right? Okay, uh, six hours of sitting in the sun to begin with, six hours. And then a couple of hours uh, patiently pouring it through that filter, the coffee filter. So that's eight hours for two liters of water. It's just not worth the investment in time. I mean, if it was your only way to have drinkable water, of course, it would be uh, better than not drinking water. So uh, that's what I've learned. Uh, I'm going to explore a couple other methods of uh, making water safe to drink. I believe my next video, my next experiment, will be making bleach from uh, chlorine, the kind that you use to uh, treat pools with, uh, and using that to uh, treat water that I pull out of the bio. I'll have to filter it. It's still going to be a long process to filter it, but. Uh, you know, it eliminates the six hours sitting in the sun. So that'll be a one video. And then the, the final video will be the bio sand filter, which I'm still working on gathering the components for that. God, sounds like a stampede. So uh, anyway, we'll get there. Uh, this is, uh, of the three methods, this would be the, the last resort as far as I'm concerned, uh, simply because of its need for so many coffee filters and its need for so much uh, time investment. Okay, I'm fixing to walk out there, grab that water, bring it in here, and uh, fill up my red solo cup. Be right back. All right, it's still, uh, it's really, really hot. I mean, not so hot that I don't think I can drink it, but uh, it, it got hot sitting out in that sun. And it didn't clear it up any. I thought maybe sitting in the sun would, would clear it up, but it didn't do a thing to clear it up. So, uh, <clears throat> here we go. I don't mind telling you, I'm a little scared. I'm skirt. doesn't have a smell to it. All right. Salud. I actually taste the plastic cup. I don't taste the, the water. It has no taste and no smell. Well, that's not bad at all. I mean, you really can't tell. That's bayou water. That's pretty amazing. I would expect it to have a funky taste and a funky smell, and there's neither. Huh. I'm really surprised. Well, no doubt about it, it is a, a viable possibility. But like I said, this is not something I would do uh, as a first choice. So, when I put this video up, if I answer your comments and there seems to be a uh, porcelain echo, <laughs> you, you'll know why. Thanks for watching.